I often get um, questions around the difference between modeling and, and different types of simulation and then the visualization of that with um, these 3D fly-throughs and all of that in terms of how in virtual reality and how they can be used in a mining environment in terms of better planning and execution of a mine. So I've just thrown a quick presentation together to just give my views on the differences and then a little uh, actual demo to show how you can use those three different techniques in terms of, um, of planning, running scenarios and e even monitoring what's actually happening on the operation. So I'll quickly show you that. First thing, just to quickly tell you the difference between modeling, scheduling and discrete event simulation. Um, a model, and, and this is really size focus, and we have our own modeling environment called Modeler. A model is a mathematical computer-based model of a whole system. So you're basically linking all the variables in your business together to create a model. And then you can model all the different activities, equipment, resources, and then basically change the different inputs and it will change the objective function of the of the model. So a simple model is meter squared mind or centes is advanced per blast times number of blasts times face length and a model just consists of lots and lots and lots of these different um, relationships and I'll show you in a demo an actual model. Um, also scheduling um, and obviously when you look at production scheduling Scheduling is just a time-based sequence of activities that are interconnected with the interdependencies between them and the duration determined by the activity length and the resource efficiency. So uh, a production schedule in the context of mining could be a schedule linking development, stoping and engineering activities together where the length of each of those activities is based on the actual production rate or efficiency of those uh, activities being performed. And then discrete event simulation is actually just a specific modeling technique of um, where you're mimicking the interaction between individual elements of a model. So, for example, you could model the interaction of trucks and shovels. And what, you pl what you're concerned with here is the specific arrival of a truck at a shovel and determining the queuing lengths and, and um, swings and loading time and all that. So um, a discrete event simulation technique is particularly relevant where you're looking at the allocation of individual resources to activities and trying to understand the dynamics between traveling time and distance between workplaces and stuff. There is another, often there's um, also what's termed Monte Carlo simulation or stochastic, um, stochastic modeling. This is also sometimes called simulation, but it's actually just a technique for applying probability distribution to inputs. So it's a specific uh, technique called Monte Carlo simulation. But now you want to, to, to visualize these different things. So you can, you can visualize a, a mathematical model in a value driver tree. A value driver tree is a visual representation of the, the underlying um, actual variables in the model. What you could also do is you could map those results to a spatial location. So you could start showing... Um, these results in a GIS where you're basically showing spatial results. Basically spatial means it's got a X, Y, and Z coordinate, so it shows its actual location um, in the world. Um, very specific in a mine, you can start looking at actual profit or objective function per location per workplace. The, the leader in the, in the world in terms of this um, technology is Esri. In terms of scheduling, you can visualize a schedule in a Gantt chart. A uh, typical Gantt chart like MS Project. Um, size has actually got a, a production scheduler that we've built with uh, Bentley Systems, which is a complete production scheduling solution that shows it in the Gantt. You could then visually represent a schedule in a um, dynamic schedule where you're basically um, showing that schedule actually playing out in the actual 3D space. And then when it comes to simulation, discrete event simulation, you, uh, event sim a discrete event simulation is just a model. But to be able to view what actually is happening and to help people understand what's going on in that model, you could visualize that simulation in a 3D visualization where you're looking at a 3D um, view of what's actually going on. And I'm going to show you a demo of that. Or you could do visual virtual reality where you're so using something I like the Oculus Rift where um, you're doing proper virtual reality and you're going into the actual mine and viewing the equipment moving around and that type of thing. But I'm going to show you a demo of a value driver tree, tree and a 3D visualization. Just the last thing is um, size has built a, a modeling technology called Modeler. Um, this lets us build models of mines. And then there's different inputs. So obviously you could run what-if scenarios. You manually change the inputs and see the model calculate. Or you could start using genetic algorithms to, to optimize the inputs, scheduler to change the inputs in time, discrete event simulation, or a stochastic model where you're looking at um, Monte Carlo simulation. And you can visualize it using different visualization techniques. 
and um, just out of interest, we've built our own pre-configured solutions, which basically have user interfaces linked to the model for specific requirements in mining around portfolio model modeling, mineral beneficiation modeling, life of mine economics, performance diagnostics, which is what I'm going to demo to you now, mine scenario planning, and workforce planning. So I'm just going to jump in quickly now to a actual model and show you how you can use a model um, to run what if scenarios and also this is a visualization of a model in a value driver tree so I'm going to explain what value driver trees are as I go through this model so here I've got a model in this instance I'm looking and, and what's important is I'm looking at this model from the top down so I'm looking at what the objective function of this um, overall mining um, company is looking at their objective function is return on capital employed Return on capital employed is EBIT and capital employed. I've actually got two scenarios. So I've got a base case and a what-if. So at the moment it's 15.8%. There's the EBIT, capital employed. And let's start drilling down into the value driver tree. So what impacts EBIT? Um, well, in, the, in this case, I built a copper mine. Sales, pounds of copper, price, unit cost. Let's drill down into the unit cost. There it is, total cost, saleable, saleable tons, fixed cost, variable cost, variable cost on saleable tons, and saleable tons. Now, I could go right down into the variables of activity-based costing, but in this example, I've kept it at high-level costs because I wanted to spend more effort on going into the actual production driver. So, generically here, I've got yield and feed to plant, which feeds into the saleable um, copper. And here I've got the value chain. I've got drilling and blasting um, throughput, loading and hauling throughput, crushing, and plant and in this instance the as you can see it's a different color it, that's the, the the constraining activity based on using theory of constraints um, and that's what's determining what the feed to the plant is what I have I've normalized these tons to all the same equivalent tons so I basically used equivalent feed to plant as the comparison between these activities and um, the loading and hauling is then loading and hauling material tons move times stripping ratio which gives you the, the, the all moved so in this instance the loading and hauling is the constraint activities using theory of constraints so let's understand now what could we do in hauling to try and improve the throughput to the plant because that is the constraining activity if you change anything in any of the other activities it's not going to impact the, the throughput to the plant because the, the loading and hauling is a constraint so let's go into hauling now and let's go and understand what um, input KPIs we could actually impact to try and change the hauling tons. So here I've got hauling tons, it's 217,000 tons. And generically, any activity can be modeled as, as the rate, meaning the amount of tons per hour times by direct operating hours, which means how many hours is that thing actually operating for. So let's drill down into direct operating hours. It's direct operating hours per truck times number of trucks. Let's go into the direct operating hours of the truck. It's available hours, which is um, how many hours it's oper operating, um, and standby and operational delay. So let's go into the available time. And you have a look here, we've got schedule time, how many hours the whole mine is operating, calendar time, and unscheduled time, which is your um, holidays and, and time off, and then breakdowns, number of breakdowns, and plan maintenance. All right. Let's go and look at your, your rate. So there we've got average payload, which is capacity times full factor. We've got number of cycles per direct operating hour, cycle time. We've got our schedule, our, um, let's go into the cycle time. And cycle time is then made up of all the information coming through on the um, fleet management system, whatever data is available. Traveling time empty, traveling time full, the queuing time at the shovel, spotting time, loading time, dumping time, queuing time. These are critical, critical variables. Uh, even your distances in terms of um, empty and full. So we can really now understand exactly um, the, the, the input KPIs that management can adjust and manage to try and improve the hauling time. So now let's run a scenario. Let's understand how we could go about this. So let's do a the normal type scenario where um, management want to buy more trucks. So let's run that scenario because I want to explain about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a, a demo um, my scenario. So I've got um, a scenario here. So there it is, 217,000 tons that I've got. As we've seen, our return on capital employed is 15.8%. Um, there it is. All right. So let's run a scenario. And um, what I'm going to do is add trucks. So let's go to the number of trucks. And we've at the moment we've got 12 trucks. I'm going to do the typical thing and spend money and 
bring more trucks on there because that's what generally is done on the mine. So there we are, 271,000 tons. So yes, it's generated more tons. And what has it done to return on capital employed? And my return on capital employed has gone up to 27.1. My EBIT has gone up by almost 300, um, 300 million uh, US dollars. My capital employed has gone up by $9 million because of the extra trucks. You'll see the unit cost have changed because um, my total costs have gone up because of the additional variable costs related with the extra equipment. Okay. Now, that's not the full picture because you know your sales, you put more trucks on the operation, things are going to change because you've now got more congestion, maybe the, the queuing time at the shovel is going to have to change. Um, maybe the loading time changes, um, maybe there's queuing at the dump. Now management could go and manually run a scenario here and, and make a, an educated guess on what the changes would be on, on these queuing at the shovel time and all of that, but this is now where discrete event simulation comes in because now you want to pay respect to the actual number of trucks, the dynamics in terms of the haul roads, the queuing time, the congestion, all of this to understand what is actually going to happen having 15 trucks on this operation. So let's open up the simulation. I'm going to play this simulation and I'm going to actually show you how um, a simulation can actually be used to actually um, understand what's actually going on in this operation. So we've run a simulation of this exact trucks now and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to press play. It's, this is the actual simulation from that mine. And um, I'm just going to jump to about one and a half hours in. It's a full 24 hour simulation and show you how actually this, this um, the equipment's actually operating in this mine. And um, I'm not very good at um, zooming in here, but let's. So here's a simulation now of this exact equipment on this mine, all the trucks running and all this kind of stuff. Here are the trucks going down the, the, down the, the, the slope, taking into account all the, um, the different uh, speeds, all this kind of stuff. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit more because I can actually get some data for these trucks. If I click on the truck um, and get the um, Heads up display. There we go. So you can see the speed of the trucks. This one's empty. This one's empty. There's a full truck going up the slope. So basically, I'm running a full 24 hour simulation now to actually show you what's actually happening on that operation. Um, so now we've run that scenario. So now let's go and actually run those inputs through the model. Now, one thing I wanted to show you first of all, there's a very important piece of analysis in this model in a value driver sheet. It's called um, reason for variance. I'm going to run this reason for variance now before I've run the simulation to show you what change there is on these tons just on that scenario. So what I'm going to do is go back to my, my, um, my demo. And what you'll see here, these are all my input KPIs. This is how many, the improvement in the haul tons. And this shows you the percentage that that variable has changed. So you'll see a number of trucks has gone up 25%. All right, we added three more trucks. That was 25%. But the tons has improved by 54,000 tons on my haul tons just by changing the truck. So this is a very powerful piece of analysis and I'm going to show you how it gets used now after I run the simulation. So now let's let's take the simulation results. So here's the simulation and let's have a look at this. So interestingly a whole lot of things have changed. Um, look at this, the travel time full has gone up to 10.2 minutes from 9.5. Queuing time of the shovel went up to 1.8 minutes from 0.5 minutes. Um, I'm not sure what other variables have changed as well, but we, I'll show you now how we can see it. Look at this, the, the average speed traveling full has gone down. So let's have a look here. Interestingly, the, the rate tons per hour has gone up, as ex, uh, sorry, gone down. Oh, so the tons per, tons per hour have gone down using 15 trucks. That's per truck, sorry, for the fleet. So look at this, the tons are actually 255,000 tons, not 271. So we're not doing as well as before but now we've taken congestion into account and let's look at the overall operation and uh, our return on capital employment has gone up to 24.1 percent not 27 percent so it's not as high as it was but this is now real because it's taking into account the actual congestion and that type of thing so let's go and understand what actually changed so let's do that same attribution analysis but i'm going to do it now on that scenario and um, and it's called reason for variance 
So I'm trying to understand the reason for variance between the scenario, two scenarios. So look at this. The number of trucks went up 25% as expected, 54,000 tons. Look at this. The planned maintenance actually went down by 20%. Because of the more trucks. So we actually got another 10,497 tons because of reduced plan maintenance. Operational delays went down 6%. Extra 452 tons. Number of breakdowns went down 7%. And extra 40, 437 tons. But our queuing at the shovel went up 290%. We lost 13,388 tons because of the queuing at the shovel. The average speed went down by 7%. We lost 6,957 tons. And our breakdown repair time went up 12% because of the extra trucks. And we lost another 3,654 tons. So that explains exactly where the 54,000 tons came from, the extra tons that we're doing. And this a reason for variance analysis is very powerful. I'm just going to show you now. Imagine now you've run the scenario. You could run a whole lot of different scenarios, run different what-if scenarios. But now we're actually mining this operation. And in, in reality, real things happen. Breakdowns actually happen. So now we load this thing with actuals. So I'm going to pull in the actuals. And in reality, what actually happened? We only got a 15.4% return on capital employee compared to a base of 15.8. Now, I could have compared it to my simulation, but in this instance, I'm comparing it to my base. Um, and... Uh, so let's run a scenario now where so I'm still running 12 trucks in this instance. I haven't implemented the 15 yet. Okay. So let's go and run uh, an attribution analysis. Now what you'll see is that the you'll see unit cost is up, my saleable tons is down, my yield is the same. So a whole lot of things are varied. I can go into hauling. And you'll see now my hauling tons are actually down by 2,000. My number of cycles per direct operating hours actually a little bit up um, but you know what let's do an attribution analysis because that'll explain straight away the reason for um, for variance so I'm going to click in here I'm going to choose the scenario which is my actual and look at this loading time 11% down had a positive impact of 4,593 tons in this what's actually happening in the mine compared to the original base case. Queuing at the shovel, 29% down. Positive impact of 1,407 tons. Number of breakdowns, 17% down. Positive impact of 1,000 tons. Operational days, 14% down. Positive impact of 991 tons and, and average speed empty actually reduced, uh, increased the tons by 240 bucks. Average speed full went down 5%. Just that 5% had an impact of 5,448 tons, which basically almost offsets all of that value. Break time to repair, 13% up, which is 4, 100, uh, 4,123 tons. And the full factor, interestingly, was also down um, uh, and it reduced the tons by 466. So this shows you just how powerful... Um, a model is what a value driver tree and how it's used to visualize um, all the variables in the model. These are K output KPIs and these are input KPIs that management can, um, can use. So, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, hopefully that helped explain um, what difference in modeling, simulation and different visualization techniques.